Welcome, everybody. We are calling to order the PZC public hearing for April 26, 2023. We start each one of our meetings with an invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would uh, care to participate, please stand. Let us bow. Our Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for this blessed opportunity that you've given to each person that's here in this building, Lord God, and in this meeting. We pray to Father that we continue to all look towards the hills from which cometh our help, and knowing that all of our help comes from you. We pray to Father that, that the business that will be uh, taken and un gone through today, dear Father, that we will it will be done decent and, and in order. And the Father, that everyone will be pleased with uh, the verdict or the, the decisions that have been made in this meeting. So we give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and continue to pour your blessings out on each of us. We ask now all of these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Humphrey, for that beautiful prayer. Appreciate that. Ms. Hart, thank you for the pledge. All right, this is going to take us into our agenda item. <coughs> Um, number four, which is the, uh, the marks and procedures on how much time, basically this will go over how much time you have at the podium. Um, it's a little different for each speaker. So again, welcome to our regularly scheduled pu uh, public meeting of the Cato Parish Planning and Zoning Commission. For uh, public hearing agenda items, if you wish to make a public comment, uh, we have uh, uh, make a public comment on application. We have PZC comment slips at the speaker stand next to the podium. For future notification purposes, it is very important that you fill out a slip and drop it in the box when you come forward to speak. Please state your full name, your mailing address, and your zip code before addressing the board. We will call each case on the agenda in the order and hear first from the applicant, then those speaking in favor. 10 minutes are allotted for the principal spokesperson and then three minutes for each additional speaker. We will then hear from those wishing to speak against an application. Again, 10 minutes are allotted for the principal spokesperson and three minutes for each additional speaker. One representative of the application can then speak in rebuttal if desired. After hearing comments on each case, the board will then immediately deliberate and vote on that case before moving on to the next case on the agenda. Please note that when the board is deliberating, members of the public are not permitted to comment. Any member of the public may request a copy of the board's decision on a particular case by contacting our office at 318-673-6480 after 1 p.m. tomorrow or by accessing our website at shreveportcattompc.com. For consent agenda items and other agenda items not requiring a public hearing, public comments can be made upon request by filling out an a, a MPC comment slip. If comments are requested for a specific agenda item, the chair will offer an opportunity for those comments prior to the commission taking action on the, on the agenda item. All of the PZC board zoning recommendations are submitted to the uh, parish commission for a final decision. Please note that it is your responsibility to comp contact the governing body about their procedures as related to the matter you are concerned with. Copies of this document and the phone numbers to contact the governing bodies are available on the table next to the podium and in the entryway of this room. As a courtesy, please remember to turn off all cell phones while the MPC board is in session. The commission values your testimony and we appreciate your compliance with these guidelines. All right, that moves us to agenda item number five. <coughs> and I think um, before we take on uh, the approval of this, Mr. Bernstein, do you have some input on this? 
for the meetings, meetings for the last meeting? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I happened to be recently looking at the draft minutes and noticed that there were two things that needed to be corrected. Uh, the first line where it reads Cattle Parish Planning and Zoning Board should read Cattle Parish Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. And then the first sentence or the first line of the first paragraph which where it reads a regularly scheduled public hearing of the Shreveport Metropolitan Planning Commission of Cattle Parish was held on should read a regularly scheduled public hearing of the Cattle Parish Planning and Zoning Commission was held on. Okay. All right, so uh, are we okay to uh, make a motion to adopt these with the corrections? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, so uh, under agenda item number five, we want to get a motion for approval of the minutes with the noted corrections that Mr. Bernstein just spoke about. Second. Second. Okay, somebody's, somebody's got first it. You gotta have a motion. Okay. You're gonna motion? Yeah, yeah, I move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting with the corrections that Mr. Bernstein that told us. Okay. All right. And do we have Ms. Hart? You second? Second. Okay. All right. So we have a motion by Mr. Brown for uh, approval of the minutes with corrections as stated and a second by Ms. Hart. We're ready to vote. All right. We have a six to zero in favor of um, adopting those minutes with the corrections. All right, that takes us into our scheduled public hearings. Oh, let's see. Yep, scheduled public hearings. Okay, case number 234 BAP special exception use for Jerry W. Scott. Do we have a principal spokesperson for that application that would like to come forward? All right, I see none. Do Did you we ask have for the applicant, Madam Chair? Okay. All right. Do we have anybody here that is just here to speak in support of this application? That's not the principal spokesperson. All right. Seeing none. Do we have anybody here that would like to speak in opposition for this application? All right. Seeing none. Mr. Clark, would you care to just? Do we need to? Do you want to speak on it, or do we? I, I, we were very hopeful, Madam Chair, that the person that was applying for the manufactured home at uh, Ridgeway uh, would be here in attendance and would come and speak. Uh, and I think it's these, this couple to my right, and they may have not understood that you were requesting that they come and speak in favor of their application. They are here. They're the right there. Oh, okay. They need to come forward. Okay. Do, oh, all right. Let me. Let me back up. Are you here to speak in favor of this application? Okay, I'm sorry, you miss, uh, missed the window, but I guess Mr. Bernstein, I can go back and have them come up. Come on up if you want to speak to us about the application. Come, come to the microphone, sir. And this is not the applicant, correct? This is the applicant. This is the applicant. Yes. Well, maybe yes. the applicant. Is this, are you Mr. Scott? I was just yes, looking at them okay. as, as you were calling want, and okay. knowing sure that we they needed to come and speak. Okay. Yes, uh, like I said, this is something new to me. I've never experienced anything like this before. Okay. So I don't know the let procedures. Me, let me let me stop you for just a second. Give us your name and your address, please. My record. name is Jerry Wayne Scott. At the moment, I live at 14355 Ella Boulevard, Houston, Texas, 770. I'm seven seven eleven uh, zero one four. Okay. You want to just tell us a little bit about what you're, what this application, what you're doing with the application? Just a little explanation. I have retired and I'm deciding to move back home, and I would love to put a, a trailer on my property and live there for the rest. Okay. All right. Does anybody uh, have any questions for Mr. Scott from the board? None. No. Okay. All right, Mr. Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Is there anybody, I'm going to ask again just to make sure we don't miss anybody. Is there anybody here that would like to speak in support of the application? Okay, we're going to move to opposition. Is there anyone here in opposition for the application? All right, seeing none. Uh, board, we're at a, a point where we need to get a motion for the uh, application. I move that we approve 
him to put the manufactured home on his property as long as the two lots are combined and that's it okay that would be with the steps is that that's in the stipulations mm -hmm. right okay steps. so you're moving to approve the stipulations as, as noted mm -hmm. by the, by the uh, that would be both stipulations the driveway permit and yeah, the, the driveway uh, permit okay. Okay. so you state it with the steps yeah, yeah I move that we approve him to do the manufactured home on his property as long as he uh, you know does the two stipulations of the driveway and combining the two lots okay do we have a second I'll second it all right we have a second by miss hart okay we're ready to vote was there any need for discussion board no nope. okay you can bring up the portal please i just need to get, okay get some clarification uh hold on just a minute sherry uh what are the, the, you had three conditions of the approval and you only included two in your okay what did we miss mr clark include all three of them the the wind and architectural feature is, is required to be installed on the side of the whole face of Nadine and the other two steps. Jake, you want to amend your, um, your motion? No, um, I'd like to amend my motion. And we move that we approve this manufactured home as long as he does the roadway stipulation, the combining of the lots and also the stipulation on the visual aspects of the permit. Thank you. I second it. Okay, so we have a motion to approve all three stipulations as noted on the report by the staff and a second by Ms. Hart. Sher Ms. Sherry, can you just erase that and bring us back up on a clear slate, please? Okay, we're ready to vote. All right, on the six to zero that is recommended for approval, it will move on to the uh, full Cattle Parish Commission for final consideration. Thank you, Mr. Scott. All right, that takes us to, yes, sir, we're done. Thank you. That takes us to agenda item number seven, case 23-9P, zoning map amendment for rezoning. Um, this is Ronnie J as trustee of GFC Trust Instrument, Ronnie Ladner. We have a principal spokesperson spokesperson please okay <clears throat> my name's Ronnie Ladner I'm here for the rezoning of 8990 Buncombe Road okay you want to tell us a little bit about what you do I do um, we are in need of additional storage uh, for equipment supplies appliances things we use for our rental properties we want to put a storage building on this property this was in may of 2022 when we decided to do this um, had originally looked at building a 30 by 40 shop warehouse in june of 2022 I contacted the permit office about a building permit they directed me to the MPC to inquire about zoning um, at that time I was informed the lot was actually zoned RA and the only way I could put a building on that lot was to um, seek rezoning or a possible avenue according to the MPC would be to have the existing building certified as a residence and then I could apply for a secondary structure permit the problem with that was the original plan the secondary structure can't be larger <coughs> than the primary so at that time we decided to downsize to a smaller shop to a 12 by 20 Fast forward to October 22, I contacted Tough Shed about a 12 by 20 building, actually paid for the building up front. Part of their contract was they would get the building permit. They reached out to the zoning uh, and permit offices and were told by the permit office they could not get the permit <coughs> because this was a commercial lot and a commercial building. The existing building was commercial and that they would not issue the permit so the permit office instructed me at that point to submit my plans for the 12 by 20 to the state fire marshal's office 
In November of 22, I submitted the paperwork to the state fire marshal's office. November the 29th, they approved the 12 by 20 that I was looking to build. So at that time, I went back to the permit office. December the 7th, I reached out to them and said, hey, we have the fire marshal's approval. We'd like our permit to build the 12 by 20. And was told they needed one more signature, one more sign off was needed, and then I could get the permit. And that I would receive a call back. So I'm, I'm excited now. We're in December, I'm gonna get my building. The callback was very disappointing. The callback said that we can't issue the permit even though you got the fire marshal's approval because this is considered a commercial building in a RA zoned designation and so they denied the permit. At this point, December 7th, 2022, I reached out to Walter Johnson. He's a planner with the MPC who had originally kind of suggested a path with the, uh, the secondary structure and having the original building that's there considered a residence. And for whatever reason in that prior six months, that fell away. That was no longer an option. So Walter, understanding my frustration at this point, he said, let me look into it and he would contact me back with a path forward. That's December the 7th. December the 8th, I received an email from Mr. Johnson. In that email, he instructs me that I cannot have a shop warehouse on this property with my current zoning, but that rezoning to a C4 commercial district has uses by default, which would allow me to have my building. He said that would require a public hearing. It's not a swift process, but let me know if you want to pursue it and I will help you get the process underway. Fast forward to March of 2023. I reached out to Moran Associates, Mr. Andy Craig, to assist me with this process as suggested by the MPC to get this rezoned to a C4 so that I could construct my building. And that's why we're here today, to respectfully ask the committee to approve our request and hopefully a year after we started get this thing built and stop paying $200 a month for storage. That we pay for in town and get some stuff out of my garage, maybe. That's it. Okay. All right. Do we have any questions for the uh, for the applicants? I, I do. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Um, so the money you put down to purchase the metal building is it it's, refundable or not? It's actually it, it's a it's a wood constructed building. Okay. They actually constructed on site, and yes, I, I was able to get my money back. Okay. Took a while, yeah. but I wasn't sure, you know, what what path we were going to get to to get this done. So I did ask for a refund. Ms. Green, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is the request to go from a R A to a C one? Okay, C four. C four. Thank you. All right. Any more questions for the applicant? We don't have any more questions, so we're going to be seated. That's it for right now. Thank you, Mr. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's call Mr. Craig to the podium. <laughs> He's coming. I'm sorry. Is there anybody else here that would like to speak in support of the application? Okay. Seeing none, is there anyone here that would like to speak in opposition of the application? All right. Seeing none. Uh, we need a motion board. Madam Chair, I yes. would alert the board that, uh, the commission, we made that mistake earlier, the commission that we have recommended uh, the denial of the C4 zoning. Okay, uh, Mr. Clark, can you speak into the microphone? We can barely hear you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> That's okay. Just wanted to make the board, uh, the commission, I keep calling you a board, uh, and I apologize, 
the commission aware that we did recommend the denial of the application because the it would put a heavy commercial use in the middle of a residential rural agricultural area uh, and then based on what your decisions are I have additional comments to make okay I'd like to speak a little bit go ahead mr. Brown under your comments. so the problem we're running into right now is we've got a unified development code that you know has been passed by the Commission the Caddo Parish Commission and this board was formed just because there's a lot of people that live out in the country that weren't happy with those codes. And so here we are today. Danny McCormick did a bill, House Bill 697, and it kind of severed that relationship between the city and the parish for our area, the five mile zone. So our board was formed and we've tried to do a master plan to amend it to do another one for us in our area so that we could get some codes that represent the people that are in our area well that got shot down also so now we're to a point that we really need to amend the code so this would be one of the things that we would like to amend because the problem that we have right now is since if you had a house on it or an, a second, you know, another residence, we'd be able to give you this special exception because I want you to get your storage building. I think you should have it. But right now, we just are concerned that the only way for us to give you this storage building is to do it through heavy commercial, <clears throat> which, you know, later on you could sell it and it could be used for other things that that area might not want. So right now, I know you've always, already waited a year to do what you've done and you want to get your storage building I totally understand but we're gonna fast track Clark and the rest of the MPC staff to actually do a co-text amendment so that we can maybe defer this case so that we can see if we can get this amended so that we can have you come back up here and we can actually just give you your storage building without you having to build another residence or anything else on it because there's just no way for us to do it right now without approving the C4. Okay. You want to call him back up? Uh, you want to you want him back? To, you want to bring the speaker back? Yeah. I'll get back. Okay. I think we have to. Do we have to vote on that? Let's see if you have any other comments. Do you want to, you want to ask him some questions? Yes, I'd okay, like Mr. Mr. Brown would like to have him back at the podium. Okay, so we need to make a motion to bring the speaker back up. So can you bring the portal up, please? Okay, we're going to vote it. Vote on bringing the uh, applicant back to the podium, please. How long do you think it'll take to amend the codes? Hang on, just a second. We're going to get you back up here to the okay. to the uh, microphone. Okay, everybody voted. All right, that's a unanimous six to zero to bring it back. Okay, go go right ahead. Mr. Brown has some questions for you. Okay, how long do you think it'll take to do this amendment, Clark? We, we're we're looking at the exact timetable right now. June twenty-second would be a final approval of parish commission. And and do keep in mind this this is a corner commercial lot. It's never been anything but commercial, so there would never be a residence on this property. No, no, I totally understand, but if we had another building for them to, we could give you a special exception, but right now that's the problem is it's just being treated as you're just going to have a storage building on it, and the UDC code didn't set that up, which I, I think it should have it, you know, I mean, we have people that farm, and they might not want to live on the property, and they want to store some of their equipment on it for their farming activities. I totally, I mean, this is something that we need to fix in the code, and I just... You know, we could do the C4, and I get that, but then, you know, we're worried that, you know, that's actually really heavy commercial for that area. You know, if we could have done it with C1, you know, I mean, that would be something that we wouldn't be opposed to, but going all the way to C4, it's just that it's heavy commercial. So, I, you know, I hate telling you, I know you've been waiting a year to get to this point, but, you know, I'm just wanting to see if we can defer this because I think we can get this fast tracked and then, you know, we can get this fixed for you. you okay. Know? And I'm sorry, you know, but like, I'm trying to do what I can do because I, I want you to have your storage building. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. And 
Go ahead, Ms. Green. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. And so if we fix it now, then we're fixed moving forward. For everybody. I'll be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. Okay, so do, if, at this point, do I? Okay, so her? hold on just a second. We're gonna, they, uh, does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Scott? No. Okay, we're good on the questions from the, from the board. Okay, um, are you in agreement to postpone um, pending this new change that we're trying to work out with the codes? Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, I have, I have yeah. an update, yes, real quick update. That we've okay. determined that uh, this could become, if you recommend it and the parish commission adopts it, could become law on June 22nd. Uh, you have a meeting on June 24th. Okay. Uh, so it could be in place for that June 24th meeting. Are you okay with that, Mr. Scott, for timetable? I, I, listen, I, I can't apologize to you enough. It's been a tough task getting this board together. We had five months of this year where we didn't even meet waiting for the official, all the paperwork to be done to get this board in place. Um, so it really backlogged a lot of things. And, and I, to be very honest with you, I'm not happy to hear that you've been at this for a year. It's not. Well, and, it, and I appreciate the apology and I'm, I'm here requesting what I'm requesting on the advice of the MPC. Right, I get that. Right. Okay. And, 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 but I would note, note to you that it's the C4 because that's, I'm gonna use the word default because there's really no other place to put you in the code as, mm -hmm. as Mr. Brown has just indicated. It's, there's a, a back, there's a hole in the code that just kind of fell and so you just kind of defaulted to that C4. It is a very strong commercial code. Um, if you ever sell the property, that code follows the property, so anybody behind you could do whatever's allowed by C4, and C4s are not something that we generously give out. That's okay. something that we have to really study on. Um, so that's the reason why Mr. Brown is asking if you will be okay with letting us fix the code so we can have something that properly fits your situation. And we're gonna work with Mr. Clark and the staff to fast track that and get it before the commission so that we can get our code changed. Okay. so that we can then apply it to your situation. I think it's the best thing to do. Yes, I hate that it's gonna take some time, but it's probably the best suggestion for the okay. board. Okay, Thank you. so we have, uh, no, hold on just a minute. Mr. Bernstein, I have to ask for opposition too, right? Before, okay. All right, does anybody have any more questions for Mr. Scott? Okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. Thank you. All right, is there anybody else here that would like to speak in favor of the application, in favor? Okay, do we have anybody here that, I think I already went through this, but I'm gonna go back over it again just to make sure. Anybody here that's in opposition? Okay, we don't have anybody in opposition. Okay, does someone make a motion to defer the case? Sure. Okay. I move that we defer case number 23-9P, zoning map amendment, to, uh, the Jan uh, to the June 24th meeting. Okay, I second. Second by the chair. I have a question on the staff. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Mr. Murphy. Is there an issue with deferring for such a long period of time? No. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Any more comments from the board? Okay, if not, we're ready to vote. Can you bring up the portal, please? This is for deferral now. All right. Um, it's recommended on a 6 to 0 that we defer this into the June meeting, and that'll give us time to work on that code for you. Thank you for being patient with us, okay? All right. All right. That takes us to our next case. It's agenda item number eight, case number 2237P, planned unit development and site plan for Rayleigh and Associates. We have a primary spokesperson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm John Lorick. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, 9242 LB Road, uh, 9242 LB Road, Suite 300. Um, I want to say thank you to this commission for what you're doing and, and the work you're doing in, in the rural community. And I commend you for the time that you give. I know the paychecks are high, <laughs> but uh, we certainly appreciate the work that you do. Um, Speaking on behalf of this, I don't want to rehash everything that we've already gone through the last lengthy meeting. 
I think you have been supplied uh, very adequate information uh, concerning this case. Uh, we complied with your request to have a uh, professional give a review on um, uh, the effect to the properties. I think we have well substantiated that with the information that we've given to you and uh, supporting pictures. Uh, there are businesses being operated, as we know, next to this property. Opposition has always taken place when this property has come up for development. And uh, we're simply asking to be able to move forward. Um, Cattle Electric is uh, one of our fastest growing electrical companies in the area. They employ about 156 people, uh, generating a lot of tax dollars, a lot of income, and all. They are literally uh, kind of walking over themselves at the facility they have now and it's uh, very important for them to be able to move and expand so that they can expand. And we certainly appreciate uh, your consideration on this. We have substantiated that there's a number of businesses up and down Wallace Lake Road. Uh, some that um, uh, back up even to Southern Trace neighborhood. It certainly hasn't affected that neighborhood. Uh, the new um, Brookshire store uh, has not affected the neighborhood across the street. Uh, in fact, they're quite elated with it. I have a daughter that lives there. And Providence has benefited greatly from the business along Southern Loop and in their front door. Uh, it's part of progress. It's part of continuing to try to keep businesses and residentials uh, progressing along the way. So we certainly appreciate your approval of this so that we can uh, move forward. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, do we have any questions for, this, uh, for the applicant? Um, I have one for you. Um, yes, ma'am. The professional analysis done by uh, Mr. Gratian Boucher uh, regarding the value impact. Of, yes, ma'am. Uh, was that, was that uh, given to anyone from the opposition or have they had time to? Uh, it was delivered straight to y'all. Okay. It, I, I, I haven't even seen it. Okay. So it, it was delivered straight okay. to y'all. I, I would like to point out that a lot of the opposition is, uh, in fact, I think just about all but a couple, is with out, outside the 1,500 foot notification range and also. I think that's important to take into consideration also. Uh, been some recruitment uh, for that. Any other questions? Any other questions? I'll be down here. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Do we have anyone else here that would like to speak in favor of the application? Please come forward. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Alvis, uh, 1069 St. Francis Way, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71106. And I'm, I'm just here in support. I'm actually the landowner. Uh, I've got a piece of property that I'd like to sell. Uh, I'm 59 years old. I've, I've never been in this situation. Uh, Y'all probably hear that a lot. I thought about when that gentleman said that earlier. I, I talk to people all day long for a living, but I, this is just, I own, I own land and multiple states on lots of property that I I've never had to be in front of a board and to do this to either buy or sell a piece of land and I understand the opposition I understand they live next door and and some of the others live up and down the street but you know and we're talking about a street that has a whole bunch of junk on it I mean it is there's there's businesses being run on the street there's there's just I mean there's it, it's just there's a lot of places that have been there lots of years. I would guess 50, 60, 70 years that are falling down. I mean, it's a, it's a street that one day in a few years we won't even recognize because it'll all be developed. It'll be, there'll be businesses on it. Um, I drive up and down the street every day. Uh, some of the stuff on that street is, looks really unsafe. It's a, it looks dangerous to drive through there. But um, Mr. Sean, is, he's offered to build a, a million dollar building on the, on the property. He's offered to do, you know, make it, move it back off the street, which is one of the things I thought was great, 300 feet. And um, like I said, I, I own the land, I, and, and this has just been a, uh, 
trying time for me. I, I never wanted to step on anybody's toes. I never wanted to get in an argument with anybody. I never wanted anybody to be mad at me, and I certainly don't want to be mad at anybody over it. But it's kind of turned into that, and I'm just like, you know, life's too short to have to go through that. But I, I guess you, you guys see that on a regular basis. And I, but that was never my intention. I don't, I don't want to really argue with anybody. I don't want to make anybody mad. I, I'm, there's probably not a, never been a nicer guy on the planet than me. Uh, and uh, but anyway, so I just, I just, I'm in, I'm in favor of it. I'm for it. I think he's. I, I live, at the, I live right up the road. I think that he's going to build a tremendous building. Uh, I, I just would appreciate your, 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 the board's consideration. Any questions for Mr. Alvis? Yeah. Okay. I have one question. Uh, the applicant for the rezoning, um, he is not current landowner? No, sir. I, I, you are? Is, yes, sir. Is there a, um, an option to purchase? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, and, you know, one other thing I'd say, you know, when it was originally submitted, you know, I think accidentally was submitted as a C4, which I understood that to be heavy commercial. And then I think it was resubmitted or whatever that process was. He really just needs a C1. And uh, this is something I didn't know anything about that I've had to learn. But um, I, I just think it, it'd be a, a great business to have on our, our part of town. Okay, it's a little bit different when you're at the podium and you're talking. I've been down there and it's intimidating. Yeah, I, oh, it I, is. I know yes, what you're saying. Yes, so. ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay, any more questions for Mr. Alice? No? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, do we have anybody else that would like to speak in favor? Hey, good afternoon. Michael Kelsch with Rayleigh & Associates, 4913 Shed Road. Uh, we're the engineer on the project representing the developer. I just wanted to quickly go over a few things that uh, the, the uh, developer uh, it has been willing to uh, concede or, or some amenities I, I, I might say that he's been willing to do uh, some of these based off of the MPP meeting that we had and some based off of the MPC's uh, recommendations uh, one that's is that me one uh, eight foot privacy fence uh, increase the front uh, setback to 300 feet to get it well off the road uh, I know that some of these were mentioned at the last meeting. Uh, preserve the trees that are, that are in the front setback and then enhance the landscaping, uh, you know, go above and beyond what's actually required. And, and that site plan has been provided to the, uh, or conceptual site plan has been provided to the MPC. And I think a few other things that was brought at, up at the last meeting was to, uh, to move some of the parking that was in the front to the to the rear or to the to the north side. Uh, the uh, developers willing to do that to add a a porch overhang or gable to the front to make it a more residential feel, and uh, to increase the windows in the front for that residential feel. And so, I just wanted to let y'all know that you know the developers willing and to do any you know pretty much anything that. To, to help make this thing go and to make it residential feel and to, to you know, not upset the neighbors. So uh, if you have any engineering type questions, I'm here to answer them. Do we have any uh, questions for Mr. Kelsch? No? Good? All right. Thank okay, you all. Thank you. Do we have anybody else here that would like to speak in favor of the application? In favor. Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move to opposition. Do we have a primary primary spokesperson for the opposition? That this person gets ten minutes. We all want ten minutes here. Okay. <laughs> I'm Jerome Nicholas, 9922 Wallace Lake Road, and um, I know a lot of this has been gone over. Uh, several times that uh, we we tried to uh, clarify our thoughts we sent a letter here to mr. Clark and asked him to forward that to all of y'all did y'all receive this letter yes sir. okay and you notice on the letter that there are over a dozen signatures of uh, people in the 
area and uh, some of those have come today with y'all all stand up so you can see there is a lot of opposition now um, if we were dealing with a subdivision you may have a hundred people here or something this this is just about everybody um, in the neighborhood okay uh, uh, and uh, part of the uh, people from the gro uh, Grove too uh, all of those people are in opposition and um, despite what the picture that has been painted before of what we'll call our neighborhood it's not uh, pretty uh, shaky looking or a lot of us have invested uh, a lot of money and a lot of our life savings in homes worth uh, $250,000 and above. You don't see those homes because they're back, set back off the road. Uh, the other, other aspect of that argument of the, the saying that Wallace Lake Road is, has some pretty shaky uh, looking places there is, well, are, are you telling me that people who can't afford to do any better should be subjected to having uh, commercial spot zoning in their neighborhood just because they're not, uh, they're, they can't afford to come up here and argue against it. So that is our, our main objection is that this is just a clear case of spot zoning in a residential area. The area, if you look at uh, the area from Mayo Road south on Wallace Lake Road to Southern Loop, all of that is residence. Okay, it may be zoned RA at this current time, but in the past uh, 50 years, it's, it's uh, gone from rural to residential, okay? And the exception um, is this uh, empty property that Mr. Albus owns, and that is right in the middle of this residential area. And if you look at the Shreveport Master Plan, it calls for commercial uh, in the area that is now the Grove. So th that, that master plan is, is, you know, out of date. And I, I don't think that y'all realize that the area that you're talking about and the area that this um, property that's proposed to be rezoned is right in the middle of a residential area so that is nothing but spot zoning and uh, at our last meeting I think it was our chairperson who said that um, we understand that change is hard change is hard and that said to me that y'all don't realize that we're not opposed to change, but we're op opposed to change that doesn't make any sense. Now, y'all just recently rezoned uh, a tract on Southern Loop, uh, right near the intersection of Wallace Lake Road and Southern Loop. You rezoned that, I believe, the zoning is commercial urban village, uh, which is fine. You didn't see any of these people up here objecting to that. We recognize that develop is going, development is going to happen and it makes complete sense to do that on Southern Loop as a commercial corridor. But what you're asking for is uh, development in a residential area of a commercial nature. And not only that, the development that was approved on Southern Loop is uh, uh, commercial urban village so in the zoning re regulations it says uh, that it's going to have a uh, smaller footprint and, and um, uh, more architectural character and that's similar to what uh, Providence has done with their commercial development and that's fine but what the proposed development here is is a big old ugly metal building 16 foot walls and a 20 foot or so higher ridge line so you cannot tell me that that is compatible with residential use and I would submit to the um, people who are proposing that is if you told me that I want to put a big metal building like that on Helen's Way 
in Southern Trace that that would be approved. There's no way that you could rationalize that. And so the other statement that was made was that uh, most of the opposition is coming from outside of the 1,500 foot uh, area, and that is true. That's because we all live along that road, and it's a very uh, sparsely populated area. And so that's uh, that argument that it's just a bunch of people who shouldn't care about this because it's so far away from them. Well, that's not true. This is our neighborhood, okay? And it may not be what you think of as your neighborhood. You may live in a subdivision, but we don't, and we have to band together to, de to defend ourselves. And so uh, we ask you to please don't do this to our neighborhood. Do we have any questions from it's Mr. Nicholas, right? Correct. From Mr. Nicholas. Yeah, I actually do. So I'm, I've actually been looking through the plans and stuff that were submitted in our packet, and it seems to me that it looks like it's going to be brick. You know, it might be a metal building, but they're going to have stuff to make it look residential with bushes, parking in the back. It's a big well, lot. I mean, I'm looking at the plans right here that have been submitted, and that's what it looks like. You know, uh -huh. and I'm looking at all the trees that are going to be put up around it. I mean, see, the problem I have is, you know, I'm looking at all the pics of all the people that own property around this piece of property. And, you know, you got one guy pro possibly doing a home business, which I agree you should be able to do a home business. But, I mean, you've got one guy doing that. You've got another guy that has a lot of stuff in his front yard that doesn't look too appealing. You know, and he's right next to the property. You've got another wicker construction that's not far down the road. You, well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going, I'm going through all the pics right now, and I'm looking around, and it, it's real hard for me to take someone's rights, their right to develop their property. I mean, I'm not saying for them to come out here and look at what's going on with all the owners around there that probably aren't following the strict UDC rules. You know, and I'm not saying for them to do that. But, you know, I mean, it comes a time that, like, how is this not fair to the guy that owns the property that wants to develop it, you know? And, and I mean, there's some options. Like, maybe we don't do C1. Maybe we do an RA PUD in which that would allow that, hey, this is the only thing this property can do, and if it gets sold, yes, another electrician can come in, but it can't be any of those other C1 businesses. And then it's still rural agricultural and it's not spot zoning. So, I mean, that's also an option that we have here. I'm just trying to make both sides happy, and it seems like they came to the table, the, the other side, and tried to do things to appease the neighbors, but then y'all didn't want to meet them halfway and try to come up with a plan to make this work. Well, all right. Uh, my yes, turn? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. First of all, the uh, commercial that you're speaking of, uh, Wicker Construction and all that, that is way up there uh, north of this area, and it's close to uh, Burt Coons, okay? That's a commercial area up there. We all recognize that. When you come down here, as I said, from Mayo Road South, all residential, okay? Residential on uh, the west side, which is where this property is, and on the east side, you've got the Grove developing there already. Um, you're saying that um, the metal building, they're putting a brick facade on it. Um, uh, what, what's that saying? You can put paint on a pig, but it's still a pig. If you're, uh, if you're really going to try to uh, soften that facade, you need to get an architect in there to do that in, uh, because that's their expertise, understanding what will really soften that and look uh, uh, more compatible with the residential area. Uh, the landscaping you referred to, uh, you probably don't know this, but I'm a retired landscape architect. And what the engineer is showing here, uh, as far as landscaping, will not do anything to screen 
uh, or soften the development, what they've shown is just going to, in fact, enhance the fact that you've got uh, some structure back there that doesn't fit in the neighborhood. So uh, it, it, from, a, from an artistic standpoint in terms of landscape architecture, you've done the completely wrong thing there. And from an architectural standpoint, uh, if I may speak for architects, uh, you're not anywhere close to uh, blending in with the neighborhood with the proposed development. It's still a big metal building that looks like, hey, we got to do the minimum thing possible to try to uh, get past zoning, and that's put up some brick. And you're not fooling anybody there. So the proposed compromises that uh, you're referring to meeting halfway, we, we met with the developer, the owner, and uh, the property owner and the contractor to try to uh, see if we could come to some compromise. And I'll tell you why that didn't work. Because immediately, the, uh, I won't identify any of the people who uh, were proposing this change, but that group immediately became very hostile and threatening to everybody that, that was at the meeting saying that, oh, well, if you don't like this, we'll put in such and such and, and really stick it to you. So, no, we, do, we, we are opposed to uh, the development, but we're also opposed to uh, the threat that they have tried to hold over our head every time we have tried to meet about this. So don't, don't look at us as uncompromising. We've tried to meet with them, okay? Uh, but they've done nothing but try to, to coerce us and threaten us. All right, we have any more questions for um, Mr. Nicholas? Okay, Mr. Nicholas, thank you. I'm right, gonna have the next person in opposition. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commission. Uh, my name's Jeff Westmoreland, address 330 Marshall Street. Suite 1000, uh, Shreveport 71101. Uh, I'm an attorney here in Shreveport. I represent the uh, Providence Development Company, which develops Providence and the Grove at Garrett Farms. I was here last time and spoke to you. Uh, I do appreciate the work uh, that the landowner and the developer have put in with uh, the PUD and the neighborhood meeting. I was not able to attend, uh, but my client, uh, one of my clients did. Despite all of that, oh, and I also am a resident uh, of the Grove. I drive down Wallace Lake Road, this portion, probably three, four times a day. Despite all the work, I mean, we're still objecting. Uh, what the gentleman just said, this is still a very heavy, it, maybe the use isn't heavy, but the look is heavy. It is still a heavy commercial use. It is a large building out of sorts does not look residential whatsoever. I don't know from the plans if it's only gonna have one side brick. Uh, if, if it's even going to be considered, it should be all brick. It should have architectural shingles, not a metal roof. Um, Wicker, Wicker, I don't know the history on the Wicker property, but it looks like a home that was converted to a business. And I believe that's the case. If you go and look at it closely, and I have since the last hearing, it looks like a home that's been converted to, to a business use. That looks like a residence. This does not, doesn't, doesn't look anything close to a residence. Um, I'm not gonna call it a pig or anything of that nature, but uh, I don't think you can take a metal building, push it back 300 feet, and then put brick on one side and say, hey, it blends. No, it's not even close. It's not a compatible use here. From Flournoy Lucas to Southern Loop, there is nothing like this. Even Wicker is not like this, not even close. Wicker's off the road, huge trees, and it looks like a residence. In fact, if, you did, if it didn't have a sign there, you wouldn't even know there was a business back there. Uh, I know I'm short on time. If the board is even inclined to approve this, um, 
you've got to change the commercial look. Like I, I agree with the gentleman before me, you're going to have to get an architect to come in here and make it look some very much different than this. I also submit that it needs to be pushed back further off the road. You've got a lot of land back there. Um, you've got a lot of area back here and it needs to be pushed back further. I know you got to deal with the oil and gas, uh, the oil pipeline, the gas pipeline, but there's still room to push it back. Um, 156 employees in this location? That's the first time I've heard that. Where are they going to park? Uh, how many cars are we talking about? What kind of traffic are we talking about? 156 employees in this location? That is not compatible. And I, can, I didn't get to see Mr. Busher's evaluation, but I can guarantee you it is going to negatively affect these folks' property. Nobody is going to want to buy a house that backs up to a massive commercial building. Okay, your time's, time's up, sir. Okay. Do we have any questions? No. Okay. Do we have any questions for the speaker? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Shari, I was, I was looking around. I thought somebody's phone was ringing. It's the first time I've heard it, so thank you. We have a new buzzer system. It helps because most of the time I'm listening and looking somewhere else. So, All right. Do we have another person that likes to speak in opposition? My name is Mary Guy. I live at 235 Overton Brooks Road, 71106, and I'm in the 1,500 square feet circle, whatever it is. Look, I've been in construction all my life. I was born in construction. I don't know if y'all are in construction or you know anything about construction. His building's going to look nice. It's not the building I object to. It's all the stuff that's going to be around the building the lift trucks, the, the, the trucks to get up in the air with, the rolls of wiring, the, the, the barrels of stuff that's going to be sitting around. Yeah, when he first gets there, it's going to look really good. But after that, it's not. you got to remember, this is going to be a business in a rural area. He's going to have a lot of lighting to keep people out when he's not there at night. That's going to be right into everybody's uh, windows that's next door and, and down the road. Um, it's just going to be a magnet for people that aren't supposed to be around that area. We don't need that. It, it doesn't, yet, you can make that building look really nice the first day he moves in. Give it five years, it's going to look like a junkyard. Do we have any questions for the speaker? No? Okay. All right, do we have anybody else that would like to come and speak in opposition? Good afternoon. Hello. Um, my name is Terry Williams. I live, reside at 9926 Wallace Lake Road. I'm like the fourth neighbor down from where this commercial is trying to come in on us. Um, a lot of it is acreage per owner, so there's not very many driveways. Um, I would like to state, however, on um, part of Mr. Nicholas's comment on our meeting when we did try to come together to try to peacefully agree on some things and work some things out, and we were very, very open, um, and it did get very hostile, very, very. Um, on the last meeting we had here, the owner of the land, Mr. Alvis, when I walked out that back door, told me to go to hell. I, I would like each and one of you to know this. Mr. Jake, he did. Um, y'all came out and y'all put up a sign to let everybody know to contact you on the rezoning. Here's the sign right here. It didn't make it 12 hours, y'all. 12 hours. On the last meeting, we tried to tell y'all that they moved the sign. We couldn't put it back in the ground. They moved the sign to the cemetery first. 
to the dead people, okay? After they did that, then they moved it to Miss Giglio's property, who started showing up, who was against it, but she wasn't coming down here in force. And she got angry. Um, the gentleman that's purchasing the property, um, I have gone by there legally, and I have taken pictures. Um, when he first came to y'all, he told y'all that he had 20 trucks, okay? It's 20 plus trucks. On the last meeting, the man told you he had four. I have pictures okay. of his place with the pole trucks and the company trucks, and he has over 20. Okay, let me ask if we have any questions because questions, your time has expired. Do we have any questions for the speaker? No? Any questions down Jake, here? Jake, you don't have any questions for me? I mean, honestly. I have my hand. Let's put those pictures in the record. Can we please allow yeah. the pictures in the record, and okay. I'll be glad to leave Madam this Chair. with y'all. Okay, hold on just a second, ma'am. Go ahead, Mr. Humphrey. Oh, Ms. Williams, my question to you, I noticed that you have the uh, NPC poster that was posted out on the property. Yes, sir. How did you come into possession of that property at um, the time? One of my neighbors told me when it was put up and that she drove by and it was gone. It was put up one day and actually it's right next to her where the commercial's trying to come in, so she notices it. You know, she can look out her window and see the sign. Sure. And she told me it was gone. I drove down there, and when I did, and I saw the stick was laying where they broke it at, but this was turned down in the waterhole ditch. Mm -hmm. And I confiscated it, put it in the back of my truck, I contacted the NPC office and I didn't get an answer. And so I brought it with me to the meeting. And so nobody has been advised of this. Nobody knew, there's hardly anybody here, um, they would have come. And um, I, I just wanna say to each and every one of you, um, I've prayed a lot about this. Um, I've had this property since the 80s, 1980, and I'm in retirement there, there now. And um, I don't have the money all these people have. I don't. And my place is paid for, and I can't just get up and just move anywhere. I can't. But I've never fought for anything like this before. So I apologize, and I just hope that y'all would pray also about it before taking a vote <coughs> that you would not like for somebody to move in next to you like that. And that's all I have. Would you like for me to leave this? With y'all? What do we need? What do we want to do with this, Mr. Clark? You just give it to Mr. George. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Bailey, can I see you? Can I see you here? I've got a problem. I can't get it back. And I also do apologize for my blurred outs. I just, I haven't been through anything like this. I do. I'm not like this. I've gone up and down our road and I haven't found a person yet in our area that is for this beside the contract on the owner of the land and the purchaser. And the owner is a very ugly man. That's all I have to say. Thank you. They wanted to make sure the Okay, do we have anybody else here that would like to come forward and speak in opposition? Mr. Thornton, you want to come up? 
All right, I'm Steve Thornton, 9846 Wallace Lake Road, Freeport, 7106. Uh, I'm going to take three minutes of your time. If I don't, my wife's going to break my neck. First of all, I want to thank you, Mr. Clark. We did receive some letters. Uh, I think I hammered him a couple of times on that, and I want to apologize if we did receive letters. The thing is, and it's like everybody else said, no matter what you do to the property, it's still a commercial property. You know, and I feel like my views have not changed. Um, the traffic's just naturally going to be worse, but it's going to be worse even with subdivisions. But the other day, I usually go to work real early before everybody else come in late. I was happened to exit on uh, uh, Southern Loop, and not only was traffic backed all the way down what looks like a quarter-mile ramp, it was all the way down the interstate. Well, if you throw a cup 18-wheelers sitting there waiting to turn, it's just going to be some massive traffic even that far away but anyways the traffic and, and what we're trying to do here we're hoping the area will stay residential and we will get more subdivisions like the Grove and things like that that really improve the surrounding area and we don't want to get to the point where possibly no one knows that a commercial property would change that venue at some point in time. So, I mean, that's about where we stand. If you have any questions, I appreciate it. Okay. Do we have any questions for Mr. Thornton? No? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. Thank you. All right. Do we have anybody else that would like to come oh, forward? Can I ask one more thing? Yeah, come. Did y'all get the report? The, the report from the yes. uh, realtor? I, Do, I'm waiting to fi figure out. I'm going to get to that. I just want to see when we need to talk about that in just okay. a minute. So, because right. I under, that's why I asked that question if y'all got a report on it. Okay. So, I think we're going to have maybe someone from the staff talk about that, but I'll bring that up in just a minute, okay? Thanks. I want to make sure everybody gets their, their time at the podium. Come on, come forward, sir. Uh, Patrick Cobbs, 9854 Wallace Lake Road. I'm like 150 feet from this. Okay. Um, we have kids, little kids, 150 employees there every day. The traffic on our street is already pretty pretty heavy. Add in an extra 150 people coming in and out all day long, material being delivered. This is not the place for that. A uh, 16, 20 foot tall building that's lights coming into my house all night long. If they want it so bad, why can't they put it next door to their house? Not ours. Do we have any questions for the speaker? Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, is there anybody else that would like to come forward in opposition? Opposition. Okay, um, all right, seeing none, uh, Mr. Clark, I wanna to talk to you for just a second, okay? We, ha we are holding a report that apparently was sent in directly to us. Um, I think even the applicant indicated, at least the first, first speaker, that he has, they don't have a copy of it. How do we want to get that information out to everybody here in the chamber? What do, you, do we want to read it? What, what do I we would need be more to than happy to read the, uh, the report, Madam Chair, if okay. you so desire. I, I, I think that's probably in the best interest of everybody here to, to hear that in fairness to everybody. Dear Mr. Lorick, as per your request, I have visited the subject site and the surrounding areas. I also reviewed the proposed plans for the new electrical shop and site plan. In my professional opinion, this new development will not reduce the value of adjacent landowners. The appraiser has researched the area and similar developments in Southern Caddo Parish, and there are no historical market data that supports a decrease in value of adjacent property owners to similar <coughs> commercial developments. The following pages are some supporting facts that this appraiser used to make this decision. Uh, he has he has some pictures. Uh, note the metal building just south of the subject property on Wallace Lake Road is the first picture. Note the property less than 500 yards north of the subject property near the intersection of Wallace Lake Road and Overton Brooks Road. Storage building in what appears to be many possible property standards violations. 
mixed-use manufactured home with large metal building to the north of the subject property and large office complex and equipment yard located less than one half mile to the north of the subject property. And that's Wickhurst uh, development. The photos before this page are a few examples of mixed use and possibly some property standard issues in the immediate subject area. The addition of the proposed office warehouse with stipulations and assuming all Caddo Parish property standards are adhered to, the development should have little impact on the adjacent property owners. My research always also revealed that new commercial developments in Southeast Freeport and Southeast Caddo Parish, which were located within close proximity to the existing single family home within the last 10 years saw very little impact on the marketability due to such development. Furthermore, the least list price to sales price ratio saw no impact from these developments. Data pertaining to list price to sale price ratio is based on such developments as Camp Forbin Shopping Center, Gulf Ridge Subdivision, the Bluffs at Ellaby, Fern Avenue Development Area, which includes a hospital and office complex adjacent to single family homes in Pyramont Place, mixed use along Wallace Lake Road, the Grove at Garrett Farms, and Lucent Fields Estates. These findings are based on data and only supported by said developments and sales. Property value is a snapshot in time and the appraiser warrants the markability of area in the future in no way. However, based on the data used and zoning and property standards, if enforced, the appraiser sees no issue in the future. If I can assist with this matter any further, uh, you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Grayson Butcher, Louisiana Certified Residential Appraiser. Thank you, Mr. Clark. All right. Um, <clears throat> we, um, mm -hmm. I think we're at a point where we can actually call for rebuttal um, if the, uh, re the uh, primary spokesperson would like to come back up. No, for, this is for the, for the applicant. Thank you again, Madam Chairman. Uh, a couple of things. One is that uh, in the first meeting, as a point of clarification, uh, it, it was contentious. It wasn't on behalf of the property owner and um, the um, engineer by any means. Uh, when this group came into my office, uh, they were very angry. Um, Mr. Thornton got so angry, his wife had to calm him down, and I was about that close from having to ask him to, to leave to try to keep those issues down. <clears throat> Secondly, um, as a point of clarification, they employ 156 people. Those people show up at job sites. They don't show up at the office every morning. They go directly to the job site. So. That's being overly embellished, I think. Uh, those of you that are accustomed to business, which I think all of you are, um, understand that. And uh, this is simply a businessman wanting to do business and develop in an area that uh, is very conducive to this type of development. And um, we can't always draw the line and and stop progress and stop growth um, because a few are, un are disenchanted. But again, um, I wanted to bring that clarification. 156 people are not gonna be showing up to the office every day. That's, that's not the way that they operate. They go directly to the job site and work instead of hanging at the office. So any other questions? I do. Um, yes, ma'am. I, I have a construction company in Shreveport. Right. Uh, my vehicles are assigned to my employees. Um, are the vehicles assigned to the employees from this for this applicant? 
I'll have to ask about the answer for that. Are well, those vehicles are signed? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. How many vehicles do you have? Is, does he have? The, those are the take-home trucks. So they take them and home, go to the job sites. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, any more questions? Logistically or? Otherwise? I, I just had one question. Yes, Mr. Clark. Uh, I, I'm still concerned about the meetings and the discussions about uh, how the actual building would fit into the the residential uh, community. We pulled it up. I pulled it up on the, the Google map, and it shows. I guess that's to the south. There are some residential homes. I, I did not know if uh, how the the building will be, and I'd hoped that that would have been discussed with the neighbors and the applicant. Would there be an architect involved in the design of the building to ensure the the residential character, the residential scale <coughs> that the building would reflect uh, at the site? Uh, the, the buyer has agreed, uh, Mr. Clark, to comply with what what the commission re requires of that. I will tell you that the two houses next door have metal buildings. So if, if we're talking about fitting in the neighborhood, this should fit quite well because there are me uh, metal buildings next door. Those, those are allowed by... Yes, I'm just saying though that okay. they are. Uh, Mr. Clark, are buildings I'd, I'd like to answer your question about the architect. Yes, sir. Under the licensing laws in the state of Louisiana, and we're the only state left in the nation that can do this, a civil engineer is allowed to practice architecture. And since you answered my question, would it be as acceptable for a civil engineer to design the building as an architect? As an architect, I, I, I think the bu the building that has been presented is out of character with the residential construction in the neighborhood. That uh, is just, pardon me. That um, that is just uh, a rendering as such. We are totally willing to be in compliance with what the commission thinks fits into the neighborhood. I mean that that's never been an issue. Number one. We've, we've stated that from day one, meeting one, that we wanted to do that. We're not the enemy in this deal. We are wanting to comply and comply with your request, comply with the UDC. And uh, that's, that's not a problem, sir. Mr. Clark, there are stipulations. Um, there were quite a few things that were, that we went over in our work meeting before this um, regarding enhance, a lot of enhancements, including some work on the gable. Can we? Can you go back over that for us, please? Um, just. The, I, I should have brought uh, Miss Tran out to. Okay. Should, yeah, I think Miss Trent can go okay. directly to all the enhancement and, and provide you that information. Because I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying. And I know, but I want, I want them to go, I want it on the record. Um, and I just want to make sure, you know, before we take this up for a vote, that what has been requested or what, what the staff has put in the report, that this is going to be the best fit for what is trying what we're trying to do here or what's trying to happen here organically so that this building will fit into <coughs> this neighborhood organically and I think that's maybe what you were asking Absolutely. the architect and, and that's that's why we had the discussion about the architect yes that's the professional that could, could meet all the expectations that this board may require I'm sorry Ms. Tran I hate to I hate to get you to do something on the fly but thank you for coming of course Okay, so, um, you know, of course you could add additional stipulations to this request, but some of the things that we felt would be appropriate is to uh, incorporate like a porch overhang at the front of the structure just to kind of help bring down the human scale. Um, you could add a decorative gable, uh, increase the size or the number of windows on the front facade. You can even require those windows to be on the interior facades as well. Um, 
And I think I said shutters on the windows already. Uh, move the parking, especially for employee parking, to either the north or south side of the building or to the rear of the lot. That way you don't see it from the road at all. Um, you know, that helped just reduce the commercial look of the structure. And, you know, again, any other recommendations? What do we have for barrier? What do we have for landscape barrier? So they're already proposing an enhanced landscaping. So what, right now it's on the plan. Uh, you know, I think that that was something that would need to be amended to enhance the land. Yeah, we can see there. Okay. So they, they've got an enhanced landscape buffer. So when a commercial zoning district is next to residential, there's a 10 foot buffer yard, but you know, they're dramatically increasing that here. So that just means that the activity is not occurring near the residential property line on the south side. Um, but then, you know, produce or proposing uh, more trees as well. So, you know, again, that's something that you can increase as well through your recommendation. Um, and then one thing I was going to note too, you could have lighting being considered in this recommendation as well. So you could have more residential lighting on the front facade, not having, uh, you know, tall commercial uh, character lighting. Okay. Uh, Emily, would you, uh explain the difference between what they applied for the c1 pod versus your recommend the staff's recommendation to go to an ra right PUD. So, so the c1 zoning district that would allow other uses other than just what their request is as a contractor's office so c1 could introduce restaurants um, you know any other type of offices and if you go to Staff report on page two. If there's going to be you know, several other uses that are that are mentioned, um, a daycare center would be permitted in a C1 zoning district. The RA zoning district prohibits all those. So you know they could do their contractor's office as they're requesting, but then the other uses that would be available. Let's say they sold their property and someone else buys it. The other uses that are available would be residential, uh, agriculture place of worship, those types of uses would be available in the RA zoning district as it is now. So C1 would open the door for a few more uses if they if they sold and moved on and someone else bought the property. So restricting it to the RA PUD helps. Okay. And, and we're good uh, with RA if that's what, what you request. Okay, do we have any more questions <coughs> for Emily while we have her? Just one. Go more. ahead, Ms. Green. Emily, what about the setback? How far back this it back? Uh, they're proposing that it's going to be 300 feet back from the property line. That is also um, quite enhanced. That's a football field. Right. That's a football field. Thank you. Okay. Any so as far questions? as the, the facade materials too, um, you know, like they I think was mentioned earlier, they are proposing brick on the bottom portion of the facade, and then metal would be at the top. So you know that's something else that you can change through recommendation if you felt it was appropriate. Do we have any more questions uh, for, um, I'm sorry, the speaker? Mr. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. And the question is, are you willing to comply with the information that Ms. Uh, Emily had mentioned to modify the building? And Oh, make it look more like a, a residential instead of a business. Absolutely, I think we've expressed that before that we're okay. willing to do what you read. No, just want you to get your public uh, record to indicate that yes. you would be willing to you'll, do that. You'll never find a client that's more easy to work with and more willing to work with you. And I've worked with a, a bunch of them that don't uh, are not quite so amenable, but uh, Mr. Pendleton is is very well. Okay. Any more questions for the speaker? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we, okay, before, okay, we need to make a motion and then we need, then we'll discuss from there before we vote. Okay. Um, so we're at a point where I need somebody from the board to make a motion on what they want to do. I move that we approve the application for RA PUD. Okay. And that it needs to meet all these qualifications that Emily went through with the residential characteristics over the whole building. 
the you know, the whole building, from top to bottom, and the porch, <coughs> and the parking needs to be moved to the back, and we need to enhance the uh, screenage around the property more, and we need to add some windows to it so that it looks like a residential house. Okay, so a lot of stipulations. Okay. Our time I, I second. I, 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 we can't. Okay, everybody's had their time to talk. You're gonna to have to give us a minute to get through the process. Just hold on just a minute. Okay, we have a motion to approve with many stipulations that Mr. Brown just spoke on. Do we have a second? I second. We have a second by Mr. Humphrey. Okay, now, any need for discussion? Uh, I, I think we need to carefully read out every stipulation That's what I'm worried about. That <laughs> that we're talking about That's not not about. just comments they yes. we need to clearly spell them out yeah. well, let me see if I can find it on here okay, we my just, eyes are we, not good uh, under preliminary I, I site it's plan it's considerations in the staff yep, report I got you. okay start off at the top of the staff report yeah okay where it says uh, eight foot eight privacy, foot privacy yeah. Yeah. okay all right, so here is what is written in the report, and we're doing this for the record. Bear with me. Okay, staff report. The proposed site amenities offered in ex Can we put this up on the screen so that everyone can see what we're reading? Do we have it? No, she got it. Here, I have it. In the package. I could get it out of the book. It should be page four in the staff report. To start. I see it, but I don't see that. Uh, I got it. Okay. it. Starts above that. Go one one above it. Is that it? That might be it right there. Back. Is that it? No. No. Not what's on my screen. Okay, hold on just a second. It's going to time to get it together. Okay, it's the one before that. This says staff report at the top, and it starts with it, the first section is master plan considerations. There it is. Okay. All right, we're going to go down and start. I'm going to start with requested uses and ordinance relief. The applicant requests the following uses in addition to those allowed in the C1 base zoning district. Now, I think we need to make this was for RA R A PUD. So this that C1 is not going to apply to this. Okay, so I'm going to take so that's this is not going to be correct because the because the the motion on the floor is for R A PUD. Okay, all right, so. The applicant requests following uses in addition to those allowed in the RA PUD base zoning district contractor's office. Proposed site amenities. To establish amenities that would be meaningful to the neighbors who were impacted by this development, the applicant hosted a neighborhood participation meeting on February 27th at 6 p.m. The meeting was attended by 14 people that predominantly reside or own property on Wallace Lake Road. Neighborhood concerns were related to how the development would impact property values, increased traffic and 18 wheeler traffic, lighting, screening and design of the building. The NPP report indicated that there was little interest by the attendees to collaborate with the applicant on amenities and that it was not very productive. The proposed site amenities offered in exchange for the requested use include includes an eight foot privacy fence, increase the building setback in the front yard by 300 feet, preservation of existing trees, 
enhanced landscaping in the buffer yard. Okay, then it moves on to the next page which says preliminary site plan consideration. I'm trying to, do we need to read this part? Well, the 10 items are the most important. Okay, um, I'll read it. As indicated, the site will be used for a contractor's office which deals primarily with electrical repairs and upgrades for residential, commercial, and industrial services. The plan submitted with this application shows the plan layout with the proposed public, public amenities. The proposed building will consist of office space, a warehouse, and a covered storage area to the rear of the building totaling 12,600 square feet. <coughs> Work vehicles will be parked behind the fenced and gated area. There is an existing 100 feet gas right away 100 foot gas right away intersecting the property the proposed development will not encroach over this right away per the udc requirements outdoor storage areas are prohibited outside of the fence and items may not exceed the height of the fence if they are located within the within 25 feet of the fence these standards are designed to minimize the impact to adjacent properties staff suggested that the site plan be revised to propose employee parking spaces on the north side or rear of the building to reduce the commercial appearances of a parking lot from Wallace Lake Road. This consideration could be included as part of the PUD amenities if recommended by the PZC board. Prior to building permits being obtained, the site plan must be revised to include a few basic requirements as follows. Number one, replat to create a legal lot of record will be required prior to obtaining building permits. Number two, one shrub measuring a minimum of 18 inches in height that planning and reaching a minimum of three feet in height that maturity must be planted for every three linear feet of buffer yard length space linearly indicate the material number three indicate the material type and height of the dumpster enclosure it must be stored in the interior side or rear yard if you are proposing curbside pickup the bin storage must be in an interior side or rear yard and screened from view of the street number four show all entrances to the building number five indicate the height of the gate number six show where work vehicles will be stored number seven show the swept path for the largest vehicle transiting the site number eight use shading or some other means to distinguish between grass landscape and hard surfaces number nine indicate label the hard surface material for the parking area Number 10, indicate or label the curbing height around the parking areas, six inch height as required otherwise. Wheel stops will be required and need to be shown on the site plan. Okay, coming to an end here. The proposed building will be 18 feet tall on center and depicts a facade that consists of standard size brick and four inch split concrete block, which will offer a texturized appearance. The proposed materials are harmonious with the existing house, houses in the vicinity. Staff has recommended that the applicant consider revising the front facade elevations to promote residential character by incorporating features such as porch overhang, a decorative gable, increasing the size or number of windows of the front, front facade and or shutters on windows. This consideration could be included as part of the PUD amenities if recommended by this board. Regardless, the elevations must be revised to meet the minimum requirements of Article 4 of the UDC, which states that windows must be recessed no less than two inches or projected out from the facade plane to provide depth and shadow. Number two, the ground floor of the, of the front facade must maintain a transparency of 50% measured between two and 14 feet in height from grade. Okay, that is a lot of information. For, for the amenities on this case. Okay, I believe Mr. Brown's motion included some additional items. Mr. Yes. Brown, would you uh, yeah. expand on those, please? We'd like the parking to be in the rear. It does say that. No, oh, it says on the side or in the rear. He's, he's saying in the rear. Oh, in, in the, the rear, rear. Okay. parking in the rear. And then the brick facade, I want it to be on the whole side so that it doesn't have a metal building. The front appearance. and both sides. Yep. Okay. Was there anything else? That was that because of the buffering, you went through all the shrubs. What about lighting you didn't mention? Oh, lighting also on, I want it to be more residential lighting. So no, no, no poles, poles, oh. spotlights. Okay. I think that's it. 
Enhance, you said enhanced buffering. Oh, yeah, enhanced buffering. More than what's on here. Than what's on there. All right. Mr. Brown, can you repeat the lighting, Nikki, and how you want it? Uh, just really, I want it more like residential lighting and not business lighting, so there will be no extra poles or. The room. And spotlights. And spotlights and stuff like that. And he mentioned the brick. He wants to brick all over the building. Okay. That's the motion on the floor. Mr. Humphrey, you second it, all that, plus what's been read out of this report. Okay. Do we need to discuss? Uh, what? I have one item I'd like to ask the uh, staff. Okay. The stone road that is on the north side of this piece of property, is that a private drive? I think it is. I'm almost certain it is a private drive. So the contractor will not be able to use it unless he gets permission from the right. owner of that road. Is right. that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Any more questions? I, okay. Go ahead, Miss Green. Please expound on that a little bit. You said the contractor will not. There, be there is a stone uh, road, basically a gravel road, on the north side of this property, and it goes to an oil well. So I'm sure whoever developed the oil well built the road, and it's theirs. It's not a public road. Yes. So will the contractor need accessibility to that road? Okay. Thank you. I don't know. It's right here. No, he's saying no, okay. he doesn't he's, want he's, them he's to clarifying that, they, that sure. they will not be able to yes. use it. Thank you. Like one of all the gas roads. Making mm -hmm. sure just clarify. It's, I think it's for dust control, uh, if I had to guess. It's probably for dust and things. Is that why you're asking? That and mm -hmm. and he's he's given us no indication that he okay. intends to use it, which Thank you. Okay. he probably will. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, any more discussion? All right. We're ready to vote. The motion on the floor is for approval with all of the stipulations that were that were that were spoke here on the record. Madam Chair. Yes. Before we vote, I'd like to call the the owner of the property back mm -hmm. up and okay. let us pose that question to him. He can comply with okay. everything that has been presented to the board. All right. Well, the, the, board owner, the owner of the property is not the developer, so he's not the person to ask. Yeah, well, the developer. You're okay. correct. All right, the hold, developer. All right, hold on the just a second. The proposing got, to build the i got to figure out the process here. Mr. Bernstein. Like we have to vote to bring motion. him back? Yeah. Have to get a motion. Okay, we're going to have to have a motion. Order. Okay, now let me make sure I know who we're bringing back. Is it the first primary spokesperson? The developer. The developer. Okay, that's the, that is, uh, is it Rayleigh? No. Okay, it's Mr. Um, Contractor. I, I got his name here. Kel, Mr. Kelsch, is that correct? Okay. All right, y'all. So the motion, are you making the motion, David? Yes, I make the motion, Madam Chair, to bring the developer back forth so that he okay. may be able to answer the questions that have been presented or okay. uh, the construction of the of the property. All right, I'll second that motion. Madam Chair, yes, just, sir. Just, 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 just a little discussion we have. We got. I would think that you would want somebody that's actually will be able to make the decision of what kind of material that they're going to invest the money in that might be the owner of the company. What, are, what, is, no. the, what is the genesis of your question, Mr. Humphrey? I is just want to ensure material? that everything that we're presenting to, uh, to satisfy mm -hmm. that the owner or the developer will comply with what we're indicating. So there will need be no discrepancies. So that would be the owner then. That would be so the proposed uh, owner. The proposed owners who I would think need to come back. But hold up just a second. We need to take a vote on that. All right. So we need to vote to bring him back up, y'all, because it's out of it's out of the process. Okay. So if you if you we're going to vote in order to let him come back to the podium. All right. Six to zero. Uh, we need you to come up, sir. Yeah. Can you give us your name and your address for the record, please? Yeah, Sean Pendleton, uh, 340 Kelly Lane, uh, Frierson, Louisiana. Okay, Mr. Belton. Uh, let me see if I can articulate what we're trying to do here. We have just um, given quite a bit of stipulations on this motion. Yeah. Okay, we need to know that, number one, you understand what's being proposed here under this motion, and number two, you agree to abide by the motions that are on the floor with the stipulations. 
Sure. So uh, the one thing was the gravel road. I don't know nothing about that gravel road. Don't have any intentions of using that gravel road. Don't know who owns that gravel road. Do you you don't have any intention of using it or asking for a driveway <laughs> connection to no, it? No. Uh -huh. you, you plan on coming off of Wallace Lane Road? Yes, sure. correct. Thank you. Mr. Humphrey, do you have any questions for him? No. That, was that your, okay. Does anybody have any questions while we have him at the podium? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're ready to vote. We are ready to vote. Before we vote, <laughs> I'd like to make a, a statement and thank all those that came here today for and against this project, uh, this proposed project. Uh, it's important that all of us participate in the process and we really do appreciate you coming here multiple times. Thank you for your participation. All right. Motion on the floor is for approval of the application with multiple stipulations as stated on record. Madam Chair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, hold, hold on just a second. Hold on. Okay. Well, I, I, hold on just a second. I'm seeing something. Do you need me, Mr. Gene? Just Did make sure that you, I know you've said it before, but it is an RA. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Fine. All right. I can't, I, the process does not allow me to, okay. to do that. I'm sorry. Um, okay. And just for clarification, I want to make sure that we all understand this is not a C1. This is a RA PUD. Okay. So the base zoning will be residential. <coughs> rural agricultural. Uh, sorry. Rural, rural agricultural. agricultural. And, and then basically on the PUD, we're, we're given the right to, to have the construction this would be giving the right to have the construction company on site. Okay, we're ready to vote. We're confused. All right, you have two no's and four yeses. So this application will move out of our chamber on a four to two recommendation going to the Caddo Parish Commission for final approval. Okay, so your next meeting, if I may speak to you directly, will be in this chamber with the Cattle Parish Commission on their agenda. Okay, guys? Because they're the ones, we just do a recommendation. This is just a recommendation. It Final approval is given by the 12 people that sit in here. They're elected officials. Okay? Do we have any idea, Mr. Um, Bernstein, what meeting that would possibly occur on? They want to make sure they're notified. It depends on how quickly the staff prepares the uh, ordinance and accompanying packet and sends it to the commission clerk. Okay. Um, Where can they track it? Online or? The best way to track that would be at the Cattle Parish Commission website because there is a listing of agendas. Um, you know, the, the, I will say that the cutoff for next week's agenda is tomorrow essentially okay. so I doubt that this would be prepared and, and be introduced on that agenda so it would be introduced on the agenda to um, basically on the May 15th 18th week the third week would be introduction and then it would be available for adoption the first meeting in June okay that's okay so y'all familiar with cattle parish uh commission's website Tr grab it there and then you can always call the clerk and ask okay all right that is i believe the last of our cases today let me get back to my agenda here sorry guys um so at the end of our public hearing again thank you all for coming in we know your time is valuable and um, I'm, I'm assuming that y'all will be seeing this chamber in the near future so okay um that takes us to number nine old business committee chair reports um i think this is probably we don't have any committee reports um would this be appropriate for me or just wait till the next one to just do the new business for the committee the request for the meeting, Mr. I think the committee report would be your opportunity appropriate. To okay. All call right. We don't, the meeting of your master plan committee. Okay. All right. We don't have a a, um, a a report per se, but I do want to talk to. I want to talk about. Um, I want to talk with the the committee, the people that were assigned to the master plan committee. Um, 
and then also to Mr. Clark, and, and then he'll get with his staff on this. Um, I would like to, there are two things to accomplish here. One is to set a time and a date for that subcommittee to meet, okay? And it will be an open meeting, so people from the public will come. It would probably be better suited if I had to guess to maybe do it upstairs in the, in the conference room. So I need to know what dates that the two of y'all will be available for that committee meeting. Um, so if y'all want to look while I'm talking at your schedule. Um, Do you have an idea what, you say what date or what day? We need a date. We need a commitment okay. from all people, the three of us, to make sure we all can make the, the meeting, okay? Sure. Yeah. Um, and because we need to say that on the record, and then they're going to have to publish it in the paper, sure. okay? We're just going to post it up in, in, uh, in this building. Posted in the building. That's got to be publicly notified of some so way. A time frame do go on a week, a month from now. We need to do it as soon as possible. Okay, we great. Need, we Thank need, you. We need to get on this. Thank okay. you. Okay. So I'm you and Jake talk about it, and I'll let you know how y'all figure out something down there, and then I'll see if my schedule's clear, and we'll go that way. Okay. As soon as you notify us, Madam the Chair, we will challenge. make sure that there's adequate space for you. Okay take care of all the other thank you mr clark um in addition to that while they're talking about the schedule um i would like to request a copy of some sort or an electronic copy it doesn't matter how you want to give it to me i can deal with it um of any work that the mpc did under prior affiliations um with the code uh, for, for the parish because i know that there was some work done on y'all's behalf before we split this board and so we would like to have a copy of that information so that we may be able to launch this committee from looking at that that work that y'all already we'll done. make whatever you need available to okay i can take it electronically i can take it i, I prefer it electronically and i will disseminate that or you can make sure that miss green and mr brown get included in that distribution however you want to I do i hope it. that we have cleared up the problem with the, with the emails uh, we would be more than happy to disseminate it to all three of you but okay. if that's still a problem we may have to find another way to get it to you okay all right mm -hmm. We want to look at it. I don't want to reinvent the wheel here. You know, we want to see what it says and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. Um, Mr. Brown, Ms. Green, um, do, do y'all have a date in mind? Yes, we do. Okay. That would be May the 4th. Uh, that's a Thursday and we'll be available from 1.30 on. <laughs> And if you'd like to have dinner for us, you can do that too. Well, here's the problem with that week. I have, you told us. That. I know. I think it's good. I have jury I duty. Women. I have federal jury duty you said starting on May the first. So, um, you said as soon as possible we comply. You um, said, I like it with there, Mr. Bernstein. He's smiling. No, no, that's no. I, I gotta go. Okay, let's let's sit it tentatively. That'll be fine. You sure? Yeah, and yeah, I've asked to get out of it, but I don't know if they're going to honor it. Do you want us to move it so you'll be more comfortable? Move no. it to the next week. It's fine. You told us as soon as possible. Yeah. We wanted to make you happy. <laughs> move it to, move it. We can move it to the next week because we're I hate I mean, having to do this on the record. Um, hang on just a second. Let me get my schedule up here. I had to let you. I had to let you smile. <laughs> I know you did. I'm so excited about this jury duty. I can't stand it. <laughs> We'll be glad to move it to the following week. Let's see what I got, guys. So that's May. Y'all do not want to see this schedule. No, you don't want to see mine. I, I know, that's right. Um, no, I'm going to be out of town that whole week. Um, let's do the fourth. What time? The fourth? Uh, 1.30. 1.30. Yeah, I know, we're good. Mm -hmm. 1.30. May the 4th, Thursday, May the 4th. Okay. 1.30 p.m., guys. That's what we're sitting in at. What, what, what meeting is this? Okay. In on the master plan. The master plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, fourth floor conference room in Mr. Clark's area, that one we were in just before here. Fourth floor conference room. And what time? Noon? 1.30. One thirty. So we 30. can always remember 1.30. Are you bringing lunch? <laughs> I think I'd bring a smile if you eat that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Got a talk. That's a tough deal, isn't it? Dang. Okay. All right. All right. We got. Do y'all have that, Mr. Mr. Clark? 
we, we were just, but we're not, and hopefully we won't have a whole lot of people. Uh, okay. Just for a committed meeting. Well, if we not, do, we'll come down here. Well, I don't know. I say that. I don't well, even know if it's open. We will. We will. We'll help. Out. We will touch bases with uh, the parish clerk. Okay. Commission clerk. To okay. Make sure that the, there is overflow. We can come down to maybe the chambers. Why are you checking your head, Henry? Uh, May the May the fourth is commission meeting. Okay. Naturally. At one thirty. At at 3 30, 30. but you know, they need time to prepare. Yeah, you know. are you bringing lunch? <laughs> <laughs> so I need somebody to bring lunch. Okay, um, we'll just sit attentively and then they'll do their thing and because then I, we'll find a place to land. Um, yeah, we'll find we a place probably won't be more than two hours anyway. I would hope not. Okay, that'll get us out of here. And if we can get that distribution of that information, um, that would be awesome. And if you have a problem with our, if, if there's going to be a problem with the, you know, the email, I got a question. I can give a substitute email for that. Uh, Would Wednesday work better than Thursday if you had the commission meeting? You can't, you can't interfere with our other board meetings. Oh, we, we just asked and we're sorry. We, no, I'm sharing with you that we have other boards, the Metropolitan Planning Commission Board, the Zoning Board of Appeals. They do Wednesday. And everybody meets on Wednesday. Yeah, so Wednesday's oh, okay. a bad I'm sorry. Day. I'm sorry. Yeah. We were just trying to. Okay, yeah, Thursday's. Let's just do Thursday okay. and we'll see what happens from there. Thank you. Okay. You're All right. Um, Mr. Clark, is there anything else you need? Any more input here? There's no more input. We will start researching some of the things okay. that we, we talked about uh, with the allowing for the accessory uh, a warehouse uh, in the RA district at the, at the standard <coughs> office drop here. So and that forth. in the special exception right okay all right we talked about that earlier okay um then that takes us to new business under number 10 do we have any new business mr clark no no other business okay well i would like to comment just very quickly just to make sure everybody remembers may the 15th is our deadline for our financial disclosures to be put up in the and then make sure that Miss Sherry gets a copy of that, and then we also still need to make sure that we, you know, do our ethics training, and make sure you send a copy of that to Miss Sherry whenever you get done with that. Okay. Everybody, everybody's looking at me like, what are you talking about? Does everybody understand? Y'all good? Okay. Well, my only problem is there are several disclosure forms. Two dot one. And you need to know which one you're two, supposed I'm sorry, to it's submit. Two dot one. Huh? Two point one. I do a tier. Three. Oh, well, yeah, but you're on a different board. No. Okay. This one, this one requires a 2.1. I don't know about your other board. Okay. I think you're. Once you file one, that's all. I, I think, think that, so too. Talk to Henry about that because I think once you file one, that's all you got to do. My question is that once you complete your ethics training, uh, is the capability of being able to print? Because yes. I've done mm -hmm. mine. If you do, if you do it online, you can uh, print a certificate. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to go back in there and it'll. Well, I may have. If, if, you, if you have a code, if you have a code and a password, okay. you now forever have okay. <laughs> have a file. Yeah, I do. Okay. So, any okay. questions on that? Sure. Any yeah. questions? On so that? you say we have to present the. You two? need to give a copy to Miss Sherry. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, the parish long range commission, uh, the parish commission long range committee is uh, tentatively going to have a meeting sometime this Friday. Okay. Uh, to talk about um, zoning, planning area, master plan. So. Okay. Just, what time? Uh, it, that hadn't been said. It could be anywhere from 11:30 to 3:30. Okay. They're trying to get it tied down. Now. Okay. Edward. Just giving you a heads up. Will I get a notice of that? Uh, I'll get you. I'll okay. make sure you get. It. Okay. Here, right. it'll be here, probably in. Just so y'all yeah, know, when they call these, they're not in here. They're behind this wall in one of those. Because I think Constance had a problem with that before. I did. I was lost. So is that the meeting that I asked you about a moment ago? This one that Mr. Bernstein is talking about? The Long Range Planning Commi Committee meeting is the one that we attended yes, in that room before. Yes, that's what we're talking about tentatively this Friday? No. no. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. this Friday. Yeah. Yes, yes, this Friday. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sorry. And yes. you said tentatively. 11.30 to 3.30. Uh, uh, they, they don't know when. Saying, it could be anywhere between 11.30 and this Friday. Friday. Okay. My question to that is, how soon will we know? Because oh. you follow me. Okay. Okay. Well, well, they would have, have to, 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 they would have to <laughs> send out the notice 24 hours in yeah, advance, so the that. notice will go out sometime tomorrow morning. That's what I'm asking. So if I have to remove some appointments around. Okay. Um, just, to, just to note, of clarity cannot have more than three 
board members attend that meeting because it's a walk of form if we do. So if y'all plan to attend, you need to let me know or let at Mr. let me know so we can make sure I'm we don't coming. have more. You're going? No. Are you going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a quick no. <laughs> okay. You going? You sit. Okay. You going? Uh, I don't know. I don't Everyone think I'm going to be in attendance. Okay. Miss Green. Miss Green will, and I will. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to give y'all any money. <sighs> I, you know, I just I've been trying to get some money, but I see these faces looking like, oh, I just we, we're trying my, to figure out how we can compensate you. So I, I see money. one, two, three, four. So that's a good number to get some cash. I'm, I just I'm want, not one of those that's figuring out how to compensate you. <laughs> I just want my parking paid. That's all I want is my parking paid. Yes, we'll take parking. Okay. Okay, which we get. Thank done. you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, so I think it's good because to see where the, the parish to see all this stuff is going, and it helps me to understand it more. So that's it's priceless for me. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Number eleven. Other matters to be to be reviewed by the commission. Director's report. Do we have anything, Mr. Clark? Not today, ma'am. Okay. Do we have any public comments from anybody in the chamber? Oh, okay. All right, we're looking for a chair, board members' comments from anybody. Great job. I think we did well today. Yeah, we think we did. It's been tough. Yeah. It's been a tough case. Yeah. All right. I think, I think they all be so tough, but I think I have to commend you, Madam Chair, for your decorum. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish I could control my facial expression. Well, you sometimes. decor me, you do really well. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's well. some, I used to say to Mr. Windsor Andrews when he was in, when I was on the other board, this some I could see it was like herding cats. <laughs> this job sometimes with because he had more people. There he had nine people on his board, and and it was nobody used the request to speak. So bless his heart, it was it was a job. So anyway, but y'all do. I you your deplorable Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but and I appreciate y'all. Um, everybody seems to do a really good job here, and uh, I think that our learning curve is. I think we're coming up the curve quickly. And once again, I thank Mr. Clark and Mr. Jean and Adam and your host staff for being so very patient with us to get this underway. And, and Mr. Bernstein, um, we appreciate you being here. We've had a lot of questions legal and. Um, <coughs> it, makes, it makes our job easier when you're sitting there and you can answer us so. And hopefully okay. one day your chair will be in you all's position over there. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jordan, you're way too quiet over there, so I'd like to just say to you that I think in our meeting earlier there was some discussion about some um, properties that were, what was that, Mr. Clark? Some properties that needed to be looked at. Do y'all remember? Some, we, was it, I will reach out to Mr. Jordan. Okay, I just want to make sure that, okay, I just want to make sure we yes. don't forget that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you know what I'm looking for, so. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Um, second. All right. Meeting's closed. Thank you, guys.